Welcome back, everybody, for some more Grand Dukes of the West. Last time we did an unholy marriage, and that was a pretty solid scenario. And next up is one that I just love the name of anyway, the Hook and Cod Wars. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And uh, this is not the last scenario, uh, as the Grand Dukes of the West are... Uh, it's the only campaign that has six scenarios, so this is only the penultimate one. This is where we will stand tomorrow, my son, when Joan of Arc burns. Already they are dousing the pyre with oil. This is to be no ordinary fire, you see. The flames must rise high for La Pucelle, as if they truly were the fires of hell. For a long time, she was a nuisance to Duke Philippe. He never could understand her zealous wrath, her single-mindedness and how she seemed to truly believe the words of fire that she spoke compared to him the ruthless politician she was another being entirely but at this point la pucelle was not on philippe's mind for even as joan dealt defeats to the burgundian forces in france philippe had yet to deal with the escaped joaquin in holland Joglin had found new supporters in the so-called Hooks, noblemen of low birth. For years, they had been fighting a civil war with the merchant class, known as the Cods. Philippe now had to walk into this mire of old grudges and blood feuds to finally defeat the elusive Joglin. Okie dokie. That's where it gets the name. Force Jacqueline to surrender by destroying her castles in Leiden, Utrecht, and Rotterdam. Your town center in, oh boy, Brouwershaven must not be destroyed. Philip the Good's forces can support a pop of 200 and were also in the Imperial Age. Humphrey is impeded, impeded by political obligations, but still manages to send English soldiers and resources to his wife, Jacqueline. Additionally, he is directing an English navy to Zeeland to invade the Burgundian lands, build a fleet in order to repel the English invaders. The sea offers plenty of food, building fishing ships is strongly advised. The Hooks, an association of lower nobles, are supporting Jacqueline, while the local Burhers, the Cods, sympathize with the Burgundians. To gain a reliable ally, help the Cods rise to be Holland's strongest power. Philip the Good has established a base in Brouwershaven, an affluent coastal town, to fight Jacqueline and her English allies. The conflict is festering in Holland between a noble alliance called the Hooks and the region's self-confident Burhers, the Cods. The Hooks support Jacqueline's cause, while the Cods have forged an alliance with the Burgundians. Jacqueline has taken control of Utrecht, Leiden, and Rotterdam. She will mainly train heavy cavalry, construct trebs, and also build a war fleet. Should Jacqueline be under siege, she will deploy additional infantry to defend her cities. The English have a powerful army consisting of mainly of longbowmen and warships. It is unlikely that the Burgundians will have the opportunity to defeat the English completely, but it may be possible to weaken them. All right, we got a. Thankfully for us, the enemy alliance is separated by the channel. Controlling the coast is the key to victory. We What's must not the allow the English to come ashore in Brouwershaven or on the surrounding beaches. Bonjour. Okay, this seems like an in interesting one. Because we've got the uh, the main towns, Leiden, Utrecht, and Rotterdam. And it's kind of a hybrid land and water scenario. So, Jacqueline. Oi! Yeah, so uh, Jacqueline's there. Burgundians, the English are the English, the Hooks, and Dutch villagers and Cods are all uh, Franks. Hmm. 
Sure, why not? So yeah, it seems like we're here in Flanders. Also, it's not just any English, it's THE English. Burn them down. Kill him. Kill him now. Do not understand that times have changed. He may be back in the force. Help us bring the hooks to their knees once and for all. We will support your plans. Um. Oh, okay, I have a light cav. I was like, man, I wish I could scout around a little bit. Oh, no, those are the cods. I was like, oh, wait, is that ours now? Nope. So, uh, yeah, we can't lose Brauvershaven. And drive the hooks out of the Dutch villages so that your allies, the Cods, can take over. Destroy the enemy lumber yard so the, on the English coast so that the English are forced to withdraw. And is everyone an imp? No, the Dutch villages are in Castle Age and so are the Cods. Because if I was a, uh, a merchant guild or whatever the hell those guys are, I would want to name myself after Cod. The scariest of fish. Anyway, the English Channel naturally will have plenty of food. Oh, the English have a light cab on our side. Oh, there's gold in England. Wait, the hooks only have castle age upgrades. Okay. Uh, let's start mining a little bit of... Actually, we can just buy enough stone for another town center. Oh, there they are. Stand strong, beloved wife. My fleet is on its way to save you. That cocky Englishman ran to England to hide rather than duel me. I have bigger fish to fry. Like the cod? That's uh because those are those are fish. Hey, stop it! Start gathering some gold. Oh, is that a relic? Yes, it is. Do I have a monastery? No, I don't. Stop it, you! Yeah, the scenario seems really straightforward at its core, but it seems like there's a lot of like little different aspects to it which are cool. Let's go grab that relic. Yeah, it seems like there's lots of little nooks and crannies where a navy can go. Unfortunately, we're well on our way to losing ours. Okay, um... 
I guess we just get a couple fire ships for now. We really don't have much of an eco. Like, we have a nice village we to start with. We also have Imperial Age and a 200 pop limit. We just don't have that many, you know, raw villager numbers. And good thing that a city can be terraformed into a large crop field. I like the map, too. It's, like, all swampy and whatnot. Get him! Bonjour! Banjo! Ah! Not the hooks! They almost had me hook, line, and sinker! <laughs> oh, I never got two mans off. Let's go get you back. Let's go get more houses. You really thought that you could hold me prisoner, Philippe? I told you I would not give up this season. Unfortunately, we can't like build a castle near near our docks this way, but we can build another castle here at the front. And that should be very nice for defending against there. You have an ear for the worries of poor villagers. The hooks block the bay, preventing us from fishing. Rid us of these fiends and we will reward you. So, destroyed some towers somewhere? Do you have a university? Oh, it's these guys. Oh, here are the towers. There are a lot of, like, little different spots of interest on the minimap. Also, let's get some more docks. Get the galleon upgrade. It doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good. That, in fact, sounds bad. Uh, we are researching chemistry. That's almost done. There's one banana. Oh, this is why we built a castle there. Are they transporting? Starting to get up. Okay. Good. Oh, yeah, whatever. Oh! Little bit scary. Get some more stables too. You are a generous duke, Philippe. Thanks to you, we can go fishing again. As a token of our gratitude, we will share our catch with you from now on to support your army. So they'll tribute us some food. Not really like the resource I God damn it. Not the resource I super need right now, but I certainly won't refuse it. Uh, 
guess let's get Burgundian Vineyards. Get him! Oh yeah, you need to be repaired. Get him! Stop it! Uh, I mean, I do have better water control right now. Let's get some more fish. Not amazing by any means, but you know, it says Zomblin. Okay, the more gold we can take over here. Let's grab Paladin for our super cheap. Anyway, these guys don't have very good upgrades, so we'll just send uh, our guys there in. Yeah, they give us food, which we actually did need in that instance, so sounds good. Oh, I didn't know uh, Jacqueline also builds a navy. Hey, stop it, hooks! Also mine some more stone down here. I guess they're only in Imperial Age so that they can make hand cannons. Sounds good. So, I think we can set up a bunch of stables for some Hussar spam. Oh, I see. Then the hooks will uh, make units and then they'll probably help us out with them. That makes sense. You'd actually think that Burgundians, since they do represent the Low Countries, would have a better navy. You know, it's not that bad, but, you know, you'd think they would have at least, uh, like, shipwright. Anyway, let's get back to destroying the docks and stuff. Come on, come on. <sighs> oh. Or at least ship right man. Or, uh, dry dock. Creep forward with another castle. Let's go take down those lumber yards. Could really use some more gold income.
Eventually, we should switch into some Coustier. Okay, so destroying individual lumber yards doesn't really do anything. Good stuff. Let's also grab Bombard Tower. Let's get a town center there for a little bit more protection. Let's just get in there. I uh, haven't really invested into much siege yet, just because we haven't really needed to. Okay. Okay, that, that single voice line is a little... it's a little old. <laughs> that down. Here's another village to liberate. Stop it, you! Oh, there's another one. Be careful with uh, sea gates, because they'll very often block fire ship attacks. Let's start making some BBTs. And now we just sail all the way over here. Then we should get the British to not be an issue anymore. Good, good, good. <laughs> Bombard Tower, the little village. Feels good, man. Ah! Ooh, they do get upgrades. Très bien. The English lumber yards lie in ashes. Without regular wood supplies, Omkri will struggle to build enough ships to threaten us. Okay, I just assumed that... Oh, okay, yeah, they're, they're allies with us, so... We just don't have to worry about them anymore. Oh, we still need to free that place. This village will no longer suffer from the despotic rule of the Hooks. Our allies, the Kurds, will be in charge of this settlement from now on. Wait, five out of seven. 
We're still missing somewhere. Why do I keep struggling to freaking go over here? Okay, we need to kind of get a bit of a better foothold, Imo. Let's get another castle. Ooh, there's another relic. Where are my bills? Kind of want to get another castle, then we can build some like siege workshop and stuff like that. Then we can begin the assault on all three of the uh, the big enemy cities. by grabbing that thing. Also, let's grab this relic. Oh, yep, that's right. Jacqueline still builds a navy. Yeah, whatever. I feel like we have a lot of armies scattered hither and or yon. Get some of those. Okay, guys, if there was ever a time to get Flemish Revolution, it would be in the Flemish Revolution <laughs> scenario, right? Oh, do I do it? Do I do it? Yeah, we do it. I mean, it's literally the Flemish Revolution scenario. So these uh, Flemish militia are essentially big old pikemen. They are fairly expensive, 60 food, 25 gold, uh, but they do outperform uh, halberdiers. Got 12 base attack, 1-1 one, one armor, but they are very slow. Okay, where's the last town? Oh, here it is. So let's get going. And you can build villagers after it, afterward. So let's do that. Just have a ton queued up. By the way, I don't think this tech is actually good. I don't think it's good design. I don't think it's actually all that powerful. I mean, if you're already about to win the game, or like you're in a position where you almost certainly couldn't lose the game, it's kind of like a, okay, let's let's just win the game right now sort of thing. But fundamentally, these guys are pikemen and die super hard to archers and don't do that well against swordsmen. Or it's like a YOLO last, last ditch defensive effort, in which case that's kind of a unfun to play against if you're the attacker. But I imagine there's going to be a lot of very amusing tournament games to cast. There we go. Always the despotic rule of the hooks. Feels good. Also, they, uh, the Flemish militia still retain the, <laughs> the voice lines of the villagers that they were. So, this is a woman. This was a female villager. So it still has the woman voice lines. Although I guess this, uh, this militia unit is, is pretty unisex looking. 
Anyway, we do have 200 military right now. Or no, we actually only have like 180. We only have like 180. Oh, we actually do get the cities. So we got Rotterdam. Get him. Also, fun fact, Burgundians only get one unit that's fully upgraded. The Halberdier. Everything else is missing some upgrade to prevent it from being fully upgraded. Knock, knock! Okay, that's fine. Charge in! Beasts have such a huge army. Get him! Honestly, let's just start working our way towards uh, this one. I mean, those are the, that's a full castle upgraded, but uh, we're taking it down. you get over here? I don't know. We have liberated Leiden. Got Leiden. Dad's been to Leiden. He really liked it. He had a conference there. No, stop it, you! So you can see the Flemish Spearmen, Militia, whatever the heck they're called, do have a ton of bonus damage versus Cav like you would expect. And we have our farms slowly accumulating gold over time, which is pretty helpful. It's around 40... 40 farms approximately equals one relic. Approximately. Because farming is a little little random, and, you know, depending on how far away the mill is and whatnot. So, more or less 40 is one relic. Which is pretty good, because in late game, for 1v1, you know, we'll have easily 60 to 80 farmers, so you can have, like, an additional one and a half to two relics for free. There we go. Oh. No wonder you were victorious. Feels bad, man. As long as you live, you will not give up. But I do not wish to kill a fellow Burgundian. Let us talk. I think that we can come to an arrangement that serves both of us. Um, yeah. We turn up the volume.
the end? It was the Pope that dealt the final blow to Jocelyn's dreams of power. As he dissolved her marriage to the Lord Protector of England, she was left without allies, and soon she was once again captured by Philippe's forces. Philippe gave her a peace treaty more amicable than she could have hoped for. She was allowed to keep her titles, but Philippe assumed regency over all of her lands. Once the wife of the Dauphin of France, Jocelyn was reduced to a position of hollow prestige. For the first time, the Low Countries were unified under Burgundian rule. A strange situation for a land so long defined by quarreling cities, but in the end, a change for the better. You see, my son, a land united is a stronger land. When its cities no longer fight each other, their people can focus on the arts, on industry, beautiful architecture and innovation. All of the things that we call civilization. All of the things that must be cast aside when one is called upon to pick up the sword. As for Philippe, with his northern realms secured, he could finally turn his attention to France and to Joan of Arc, the Maid of Orléans. Oh no! I don't want to be the one who has to take out and freaking burn Joan of Arc at the stake. Oh, feels bad, man. There we go. 200 largest army. That was a really good one. I really like that scenario. I like the map design a lot. You kind of have the three disparate cities here that Jocelyn's attacking you from. You have England, which is a pretty large presence, right? I mean, it is it is too big to conquer. You know, and that's not really the goal, but that still doesn't mean that the naval aspect isn't important. Like all the little marshy, twisting rivers and stuff. And Yeah, I, I really like that scenario. It's a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyway, that was the Hook and Cod Wars. And next up will be our final Burgundian scenario, where we get to feel terrible about ourselves. It's the Maid Falls. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.